Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Here are today's top headlines. Toyota will debunk a professor's test that shows unintended acceleration. The big three are hopping mad at Toyota and Chip Foos customizes a John Deere tractor. Up next, we'll be back with the news behind the headlines. This is AutoLine Daily for Monday, March 8th, 2010, and now the news. Big test taking place later today. The AP reports that Toyota claims it can prove that Professor Dave Gilbert of the University of Southern Illinois essentially concocted a hoax when he wired a Toyota Avalon to induce unintended acceleration. ABC News ran that test the day before Toyota executives appeared before a committee in the U.S. House of Representatives. The timing of that piece made it impossible to verify its accuracy before the hearings. Toyota will rely on the Center of Automotive Research at Stanford University to conduct the test. The Detroit Free Press reports that GM, Ford and Chrysler are mad at Toyota for what they see as calculated misleading attempts to trash their quality. Toyota sent a set of charts to key congressional committee members showing that the Detroit 3 had three times the safety recalls than Toyota over the last decade. The big three are mad because those recalls had nothing to do with the current investigation into unintended acceleration and was clearly calculated to deflect criticism of Toyota. General Motors will pay its newly appointed vice chairman of corporate strategy and business development, Steve Gursky, $5 million a year. According to Reuters, the compensation is mostly in the form of equity or stock, as Gursky will have a base pay of $500,000 a year. But Gursky and his boss, Ed Whitaker, are now earning some of the highest compensation in the global automotive industry. And speaking of having it pretty good, the Detroit News reports that before he retired from AT&T, Whitaker cut a deal for flying free up to 10 hours a month on AT&T corporate jets. GM got rid of its jets last year while in bankruptcy and says Whitaker does not use the AT&T jets for GM business, but neither company would say how he has been using the planes. In other GM news, the company announced it will reinstate 661 dealers it dropped during bankruptcy last year. GM President Mark Roy says they are eager to restore those relationships, but clearly the only reason GM is doing this is because it is being forced to by the American Arbitration Association. Wards reports that GM is planning on dropping the Daiwu brand and replacing it with the Chevrolet brand. One of the reasons for the switch is that Chevy is a much more prestigious brand that attracts a younger, more image conscious buyer. The other reason is that something like 98% of Daiwu's production is with Chevrolets. South Korea is the only country where Daiwu branded vehicles are sold. Auto designer and customizer Chip Foose is best known for creating some of the most beautiful hot rods around. But Autoblog reports that he's turned his attention to a different kind of American iron. Foose has just completed a special project for John Deere. He's customized a vintage 4020 model tractor, which the company is giving away. Swing by your local Deere dealer to enter for your chance to win this one of a kind piece of equipment. Coming up next, we'll take a look at My Ford Touch. A week or two ago, we told you about My Ford Touch, a new user interface that aims to simplify how people use in-car technology. Today, we're talking about the other half of the story and how Ford is integrating its sync system with mobile devices. Applications are hot right now. Creating and selling these small bits of software has turned into a big business. In fact, there's more than 140,000 apps available for the iPhone alone. They range from games and other time wasters to indispensable utilities like GPS navigation and barcode scanners that automatically compare prices. 
Users are snapping them up as fast as developers are coming out with them and it doesn't look like they're slowing down anytime soon. Application downloading is up 82% from 2008. Um, 40 million downloads in the second quarter, uh, and we only expect that number to grow higher. All the trends that we see uh, show that apps and, and app downloading are just continuing and continuing uh, to grow. Ford wants to be a part of this booming business, and it's created an API, or Application Programming Interface, that allows its sync system to directly communicate with apps installed on smartphones. This gives drivers the ability to safely access their favorite programs from behind the wheel using the sync interface. The company sees in-car applications as the future, but like most cutting-edge tech, it's starting out modestly. Um, we're offering three applications to start. Uh, those are the ones that we're announcing now, which are Pandora and Stitcher, um, which are personalized audio content sources. Um, as well as OpenBeak, which is an application that connects you to uh, the Twitter service. And uh, so we think those three applications really um, hit hard in terms of where the automotive space um, is going, making your in-car experience um, better than, uh, than it was previously. Pandora is an internet radio station that plays and recommends music for you based on what you like. Stitcher is very similar to Pandora, except it focuses on news broadcasts and talk radio. OpenBeak is a mobile client that allows users to access Twitter. Right now, Ford is completing beta testing on an SDK, or Software Development Kit, which will allow programmers to create applications that are compatible with Sync, so look for many more apps to be released in the future. And that's it for today's top news in the global automotive industry. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.